everyone, and welcome to The Crow Show, brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Each week, we'll help you learn more about the players and coaches as we fly as one in 2018. Coming up in today's show, the fledgling Crows grabbing their opportunity. And reinventing the Ruckman. But first, one of the most pleasing highlights of this season so far has been the sparkling form of Paul Seedsman. Too often, injuries have hindered his career, but with a full pre-season under his belt, he's showing just why the club recruited him from Collingwood. At one stage, Seedsman was unsure if he'd ever play elite football again. But in this chat, brought to you by Revolution Roofing, he explains how he's overcome the setbacks. They've done it well, Laird, using Seedsman from the tight, tight end. Paul Seedsman has rarely been fitter and doesn't it show. Here's Seedsman running an arc. The snap from the former magpie is really good. Against Sydney, he ran a career best 16 kilometres, helping out in defence as well as driving many attacking moves. I definitely feel like I'm getting up and down the ground um, and able to run out games and I think that's helping with my consistency throughout the game instead of coming in and out. So, uh, yeah, no, that being able to have the full pre-season has definitely helped. But it was a different story last year. Dogged by persistent hip injuries for around nine months, he faced the grim prospect of perhaps never playing again. It, it wasn't coming along how I wanted it to and I guess I had to, at that stage I was 25 out of contract at the end of this year, I just had to look at you know, the worst case scenario and sort of prepare myself. But an extended strength and conditioning program is paying dividends. I have confidence in my body again um, and you know doing a little bit of work in the mind space has been good for me. Seeds is playing with a freedom that he seldom enjoyed over his seven year career and he couldn't be happier. I love it, yeah, it's um, yeah, the start of the year. We've had our ups and downs but you know, I'm just sort of so you know, thankful for, to be out there and to be playing football and um, you know, being able to string a few games together. Seedsman from outside 50, no mistake, kicked it beautifully. In the absence of Brodie Smith, Seedsman's penetrating delivery from the wing has been vital to Adelaide's ball movement. Now, for any player, being presented with your Guernsey before your first game is definitely a career highlight. Young Miles Paholke, well, he got to enjoy the experience in Sydney and what made the occasion even more memorable was that he made his AFL debut alongside one of his best mates, Jordan Gallucci. It gives me great pleasure um, to introduce the 220th player to don the Adelaide Crows jersey. Past players include uh, Matty Roblin, Matty Robin, uh, The Wiz, Matty Wade, Matty Bode and... Uh, <laughs> Let's start again, let's start again. Oh, Huey just uh, couldn't put his words together, so we had to start again and um, mumble jumbles a little bit, but um, yeah, we got there in the end. First and foremost, gives me the honour to introduce the 200. <laughs> what? The 220th player to wear the Adelaide Crows footy jumper. Well, that's just fine, Mark, by Pop I spoke to you on the phone, mate, and uh, said there was some relief. Um, mate, and hopefully there's some nerves tonight. I'm sure there is um, some excitement, um, but I hope there's an element of trust, mate, because um, the people in this room trust what you've, what you've been through and what you've done and the steps you've taken to get here, mate. Um, so I hope you have some trust in yourself tonight to go out and play a role for us, which I know you will. And I'm super proud and privileged to present this jump to you, mate. So well done. And that was just unbelievable. It's a dream come true, really. You dream of these things as a young boy, so um, to be out there with the likes of Buddy Franklin and all those, so um, I was a little bit starstruck, but I was glad we got the job done in the end. And he was run down by a desperate Mahogi. I never thought I was a chance, to be honest. When Pikey called me on uh, Tuesday, I think it was, I was just praying that I wasn't travelling emergency, so um, to get the call this week was unbelievable, and then to get the win, just uh, cherry on the top. I've known Joey for probably four or five years now. We um, went through the AOS together and we um, formed a pretty close bond from early days. So um, I texted him um, on the day of and I, he didn't know that I was playing yet. And he said I was playing, so um, yeah, I quickly was, I was pretty quick to tell him that I was playing as well. And it was um, yeah, it was really great to be able to share that moment with him. Now, 
young Miles was the fourth crow to make his AFL debut this year, underscoring the depth of talent at the club. Of course, a string of injuries to senior players have given the youngsters the opportunity to stake a claim for more games. And Mark, it all sets up really well for the future, doesn't it? Well, it does indeed. And you think about the, the number of young players who have made their debut already this year. There's been four. I think we've only had four in the last couple of years. So <laughs> we're, we're six rounds in, which is fantastic. And the, the game against Sydney, which was one of the club's best wins, there was five players in there that had less than 20 games experience. So like you said, um, you know, Tom Duday was very good in that game. But it's been the, the energy and excitement that all the young players have brought. And I think that, uh, that that certainly carries over to some of the more experienced players. You mentioned Duday. Is he the standout for you? Well, look, it's, yeah, in the first six weeks, he's been very good. I've loved Darcy Fogarty, the way he's gone about it. He's clearly got, um, you know, a big body. He's not intimidated by anyone. I love his aggression. But that's taking nothing away from some of the other players. Uh, Paholke, uh, of course, Lockie Murphy is another one. And uh, Jordan Gallucci, I think we can probably class him as a debutant. He played one game last year. He was back in, uh, he's back into the side again now. And, and he did some really good things, particularly late against Sydney. And I guess the great thing about so much youth, they might lack experience but they certainly bring enormous energy. Yeah and they breathe life into the place and I think you see that on the ground as well when at different stages whether uh, some of the youngsters have um, kicked their first goal or done something really well to set a goal up you can see everyone get around them and every player has a journey to, to get to making their AFL debut and um, there's all great stories behind them so when they finally make it and when they do something good you can see the the excitement that that brings to the group. Absolutely good to get your take thanks Mark and uh, of course full credit should go to re the recruiters and developers for identifying and nurturing these young players. Well still to come on the Crow Show, flying in rarefied air. And that man Smithers, never far from the action. Now, as we know, Brodie Smith needs to fill in some time while he recovers from that knee reconstruction. So each week, with the support of Thomas Farms, we ask him to learn a little more about some of the club's youngest fans. Welcome to Junior Jam, brought to you by Thomas Farms. Last year I interviewed my teammates, this year I'll be interviewing some of our youngest members. This week we've got Sam. Welcome Sam. Hello. First of all, your age, do you play footy and who's your favourite player? I'm 11 and I only play football at school, like have a kick. And my favourite player is Hugh Greenwood and you. Hugh, nice. Huey, I was more surprised by Huey, no offence to you if you're watching. Um, but me, that's a good start. Uh, what do you like about Huey? How he always is near the ball and always pushing for it. Yeah, got a pretty cool haircut too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you could take an animal from the zoo, what would it be and how would you do it? I would steal a snow leopard <laughs> and I would hire some people to do it for me. Smart man. If you had to play for the Crows this weekend, where what position would you like to play? Uh, key forward. Key forward. Uh, key defender, I mean. Key defender. So, nice, yep. So who would you take out? Um, Kelly. <laughs> I'm a big ball. <laughs> nice. So it'd be you next to Hardo, Talia, and then you handball off to me and Lady. Good deal. Yeah. yeah, nice. All right. Thanks for joining us, Sammy. Thank you. <laughs> Funny that each week Smithers seems to be their favourite player. Well, don't forget to sign up as a junior member and receive all the great benefits. Head to 19thman.com.au. Now, Mark of the Year was first awarded back in 1970. And since then, the distinction has gone to only three Crows players. Today, in our High Flyers segment, brought to you by Flight Centre, we feature Ben Hart's winning screamer, taken in 1996, when St Kilda's Peter Everett kicked the ball inside 50. Hart took one of the great intercept marks. Blows the target. 
Texas versus St Kilda and the ball was coming inside 50 and um, basically I was running away with my opponent and the ball got kicked behind me so I really just turned and jumped and happened to be Jason McCartney sliding in underneath with Stewie Lowe and I got a really good ride, took the catch uh, and came down pretty heavily but uh, probably milked it for everything it was worth. Back then we won a car for Mark of the Year, so that was that was pretty good. And I actually kept the car for a while because I didn't have one at the time. So I was driving the car around and I even sold it to my mum and dad at the end of it. So I had a little profit as well. Interesting when you start playing defence, you're not really meant to do that. But I was always an athletics fan. I did a lot of high jump and um, had a little bit of spring. So it was something that I enjoyed. Um, and every now and again to be able to take one on the field was pretty exciting. Blighty was always one to, to use his strengths and he wanted to take the game on. And if there was an opportunity to go for it, he was pretty much do it and have a go. If you if you keep mucking it up, put it away, but he was happy for you to have a go. You can't go past Gov, Richie McGovern, he's pretty good at it himself. Um, his timing is Im impeccable. Uh, Jeremy Howe, lucky enough to coach him for a couple of years, he's a freak with just his timing, the way he goes about it. You even look at a big Grenville Dietrich, who back in the day, he was a big man, but he could still get off the ground and take some, some good catches, so he used to love them. And Brett Burton wanted me to mention him, because he was one who used to catch it all right as well. Well, the other two crows to be awarded Mark of the Year have, of course, been Tony Moderate not once but three times and Brett Burton. Do stay with us. After the break, meet another high flyer, this one in the world of eSports and the Ruck Resurgence. It wasn't so long ago that some judges were questioning the future of Ruckman. Now, a little more than a year since the third man up option was banned, the big men are again stamping their authority on the game. In round four, Brody Grundy became just the second Ruckman to ever have 40 plus hit outs as well as over 30 disposals and he kicked the goal. Just the week before, Stefan Martin had 49 hit outs and 30 possessions. So far this year, the average number of stoppages is the same as in 2004, but the elite Ruckman are now averaging 17 more hit outs a game and nearly five more disposals. We take up the issue with Crows big man Sam Jacobs and former Bulldog Luke Darcy. <laughs> A happy time for Ruckman and a good time for the game. I'm uh, excited by it. I think it's great to see Ruckman you know, getting involved in the game, getting 30 plus possessions. You know, I think it sets the tone for how you want your big guys to play. You know, big Source Jacobs has, uh, has been an outstanding player for the last two years, but he's probably looking now and going, the, the, the bar's been raised maybe even more. It's great to see that, I guess, the Ruckman coming back into vogue. And um, as you can see now, they're sort of really starting to get the headlines and um, they're starting to play some really strong footy. Um, obviously, over my time, there's always been, you know, consistently really good big men, but I feel at the moment now there's, you know, a really array of, of different types and also guys on top of their game. Well, it's been a bit of a theory that maybe you don't draft early with uh, with quality ruckman. I, I, I've always disagreed. If there's if a good player, you know, Bulldogs have got a young guy called Tim English, so I think it was an early draft pick. I think he's going to be an outstanding player because he looks to me the sort of player that could have a 30 possession game, can take marks, can kick goals, can tackle. The young big man, Tim English, 205 centimetres, 93 kilos. Of is it because of the, the change of the third man? Um, I think that's sort of a part of it, and that's enabled Ruckman to, to be able to, I guess, hone their craft and be a bit more dominant with their hit outs. But I think um, it's more than that now. You see guys taking contested marks, you see him kicking goals, you see him tackling, and you know, Brody Grundy, Max Gorn are probably the guys at you know, top of the tree at the moment. It'll be interesting to see when the Brownlow medal comes around whether the umpires recognise the Ruck revival. Now, if you can't get to the Crows games, show your support for the club by signing up to our free We Flyers One membership. Benefits include exclusive member-only communication from the club, 10% discount at Crowmania, priority ticket access, plus other exciting promotions. In the rapidly growing world of eSports, the name Strawbella rivals that of Tex Walker in the AFL. It's the game name of Isabella Chan, the captain of the Crows legacy eSports Overwatch team. Away from the screen, she plays golf off scratch and manages to study while also working part-time as a dental assistant. 
As a professional gamer, Isabella is the first female to qualify for the Oceania League. Her online life began when she was just seven. Once you start playing with the same people and you have that interest of going a bit further, you do start looking for a team, you start looking into the open divisions and then progress your way through and start gaining that experience, um, just learning, yeah. Isabella turned professional only four years ago. She admits to being fiercely competitive, a trait that also helped her excel at golf from the age of 10, playing tournaments interstate and overseas. But gaming filled a need. Golfing was good, but also kind of felt a bit lonely sometimes. Like you'd have all the girls, um, like you travel together and all that, but in the end, it always came down to yourself. And I really enjoy playing team games. I like the environment better. A strict training regime of three to five hours a day is driven by the strong desire to prove herself as a role model and a successful leader of the Crows eSports team. Yeah, I'm not really aggressive in competitions. It's more just I enjoy improving and I strive for that, but it's not me wanting to ever put someone down. It's me always looking to improve myself. Isabella, otherwise known professionally as Strawbella, is one of more than 60 million international gamers who play each month. I definitely recommend them playing eSports or at least giving it a go because it is like other sports as well. It's not as physically draining, but it's really good mentally. The Crows have certainly put themselves at the forefront of online sports in Australia. When Alana returns, we'll track down our face in the crowd and we cast a critical eye over Club Guernsey's. saying that every Adelaide supporter loves the Crows Guernsey and all its variations. But is there another club Guernsey which they like? Essendon, I reckon. Yeah. No, I don't even want to say what I'm thinking. Giants, not bad. Sydney Swans, I think. Tigers? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've always liked Hawthorne. GWS, I reckon. Yeah, I, I like their orange strip. I reckon GWS. Yeah. I, I like the colour scheme and I just think in time it will get better, but I think they're progressing along with what they've got. Personally, I probably lean towards some of the more traditional Guernseys and love their simplicity like Carlton, Geelong, Collingwood. All right, time to go looking for our face in the crowd now. So many colourful and vocal supporters to choose from. Let's settle on you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm on Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and a merchandise pack courtesy of Toyota will be yours. It's simple as that. Alana, that's about all we have time for today. Yeah, thanks to Food Lamp. We will be back next week and catching up with Bryce Gibbs to find out how he feels about playing against Carlton for the first time. Yes, and a reminder that to keep up to date with all the Crows news and player interviews, go to the club website, afc.com.au, as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company today. We look forward to joining you again next Sunday on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.